A coalition of civil society organizations convened a press conference in Kingston today to press home their demand for better governance and a more inclusive approach to decision making at the political level. But what is so bent, badly out of shape or broken about the system of governance in Jamaica and how far are these groups willing to go to press home their demand for the change that they've been agitating for for so long? I've laid out the issue to be discussed today on Lead Story here on CVM TV. Thank you for joining me on Lead Story. My name is George Davis. Constitutional and procedural questions are being raised by members of civil society organizations, of course, about the tabling of reports from the Auditor General's Department to the Houses of Parliament. And there are also concerns about the Integrity Commission and the way matters from the Integrity Commission are, hand, are being handled and the, the seeming dueling dragon situation between parliamentarians and the leadership of the Integrity Commission. Those issues and others among, us, among matters tackled today by a group of civil society organizations, rather a coalition because they're all groups individually, but they met today to talk about issues that they believe are affecting the quality of governance in the country. Two of the leader, well, two leaders from that coalition have stopped by to talk to me today. Mikhail Jackson from JFJ and the Advocate Net, Advocates Network have tasked Robert Stevens with representing on their behalf. And I say good evening to them now, ladies and gentlemen. Good, good evening. evening. Good evening. Thank All you so right. Much. Let, 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 let's go right to it. Because the matter of the way the Auditor General's reports have been handled by Parliament has taken up a lot of column inches, a lot of uh, news, um, radio airtime, a lot of TV airtime. We are still no nearer to having the government say, OK, this is what the Attorney General's opinion is. Today at the post-Cabinet press briefing, the Minister with Responsibility for Information said there are more important issues to be discussed at this time. Does that kill the matter for you, uh, Bikil, or does it make you more resolute to get at the heart of the issue what that opinion was? It, it makes us more resolute um, as an organization, um, Jamaicans for Justice, and certainly as a part of the coalition. And I think when public officials act in a manner that disregards public concerns, uh, matters regarding good governance, that is a cause for concern for the Jamaican people because I, I found the utterance by the information minister to be unfortunate and one that is really smack in of arrogance mm. with the greatest of respect because you can't say that it is immaterial or there are more pressing issues because what could be more pressing than holding those that we have elected mm. to serve us to account. The matter of the Auditor General's report being tabled and, um, and so on, and the sharing of the Attorney General's um, opinion is of grave concern to us. And I think at this point, we have called for the matter to be litigated. Mm. And that is where we call on the Parliament to Would you take opposition. the matter to court, JFJ Wood? No, we have some other matters. Mm -hmm. For example, the mentally ill um, prisoners yes. that we are already litigating as a part of a team. Mm -hmm. So our capacity right now, it's stretched yes. a little bit too thin. Mm -hmm. But that is where your parliamentary opposition comes in yes. um, as another measure of accountability within the parliamentary mm -hmm. system. And I think at this point, we have to hold the parliamentary opposition to account mm -hmm. that when you have a ruling political party that may be acting contrary to good governance and those principles, then the leader of the opposition and those who are within his support mm -hmm. um, should act accordingly. And at this point, because they have legal standing, they should take the matter to um, court. Mm -hmm. And what we will continue to do as organizations collectively and independently is to continue to have the Jamaican people recognize the importance of this type of conversation. Robert, just to ensure that I don't lead Mikel or the viewers astray, uh, correctly what Morgan said at the press conference there was in relation to the Valerie Curtis letter withdrawal demand by the opposition and other members of society. Yes. He said that there are more important issues to deal with at this time. What he did say though regarding the AG's report was that the, as, a, as, a, as a member of, of, of cabinet, as a member of the legislature, his role is different from the Speaker of the House of Parliament, and he couldn't ordinarily be expected, or the cabinet could only be ordinarily be expected, to instruct the Speaker to share an opinion that she, in her opinion, believes she should keep private. Where do you stand on the matter? Well, look, 
We feel that there needs to be just much more transparency in terms of dealing with the people of Jamaica. The government should not be hiding or, or getting things as opinions from an attorney general and keeping them secret. These should be exposed to every parliamentarian because it guides everybody, mm -hmm. not just parliament, but the entire country. But wouldn't we, break, wouldn't we be breaking new ground by sharing opinions as a matter of course from an attorney general? That has never happened under an administration before. Yeah, but let's face it. Yes. This is a very touchy issue. Mm -hmm. This is an issue dealing with the question of the tabling of reports from the attorney general, the auditor general, yes. as well as the integrity commission. These are extremely, these are reports that basically hold people over the coals if they are stepping out of line. We need to know about these things. We need to be kept informed about where we are going as a country in terms of our governance. And what we should be trying to do is get into a situation where things are far more open and far more transparent. We need people to understand. But, but, but here's the thing, here's, here's, here's the thing I, I've, been, I've been grappling with, Michael Jackson. If it is that we're talking about systems of governance and, and, and structures working, the House Speaker says, okay, I got that opinion, I'm not sharing it. The parliamentarians from the party that she's from are being pressured, i.e. the government, to compel her to share that opinion. Isn't that the same bastardization of the separation of responsibilities and duties that the advocates cry out about that they're not asking the legislators to engage in? Actually, no. Mm. And I want to clarify, and I'm happy you went there. Yes. Because understanding the Constitution is key to this particular conversation. The Attorney General, based on the constitutional structure, is there as the government's lawyer. Mm -hmm. And the government, based on how it is structured in the Constitution, is speaking to the cabinet, the policymakers. Mrs. Holness doesn't sit in cabinet. Right. Mrs. Holness is a House Speaker of the legislative branch, mm. of which she's one of 63 members mm -hmm. of parliament. The question does arise, if Mrs. Holness was seeking the opinion of the Attorney General, and if she got it, mm. is there a conflation of the branches of government, which is the executive branch where the Attorney General will be supporting, mm -hmm. versus the legislative branch. Mm -hmm. If one is to accept that Mrs. Holness could, and she got the advice, mm -hmm. was she seeking it on behalf of Parliament, mm. where she sits? Mm -hmm. And in that situation, it's not her opinion mm. to assert privilege. It is the Parliament's opinion, mm -hmm. and therefore it ought to be shared. And that is the conflation. And I love to go to what has happened in other jurisdictions. Yes, yes, after Turks the break. After Absolutely. the break, we can do that. Speaking with Robert Stevens from the Advocates Network and JFJ's Mikhail Jackson about matters of governance and how the very, very touchy issue of the Auditor General's reports submitted to Parliament and their treatment, and of course the House Speaker's refusal so far to share publicly the advice given to her by the Attorney General about how the aforementioned reports ought to be handled. More on the lead story after these. Hi, I'm Wayne. And I'm Tammy. And, and we, we are, are the Mitchells. You can watch Meet the Mitchells right here on CBN TV every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Yes, you guys don't want to miss it. We will be having new episodes every week, so definitely follow along with our family. Meet the Mitchell family. Good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> You're the sugar to my tea. Meet the Mitchell family. What up, y'all? It's your boy, Ray Lawrence. The Moon Doc. And you're watching Cooking with Love. You can't scare me. You can't scare me. CBM TV. Keep it locked in. You see me? The ladies need to see you in a nice love scene. <laughs> Where well, you going, my fool? I'm a summer boss again, and I'm a dick. Uh -huh. I got it like that. Welcome back. We are taking up with matters concerning governance and uh, the uh, disposal, rather, or, or what well, the disposal of, well, the exercise, rather, 
of responsibility at the legislative level and uh, the way responsibility and power is wielded at the level of the leadership of the Houses of Parliament. I have Robert Stevens here with me. He's from the Advocates Network and the Jamaicans for Justice uh, has sent Mikkel Jackson. Well, she's not, nobody has sent her. She's come. She's the executive director there after all. Uh, the issue we were talking about, you, you said that you wanted to drive home the point by looking at what obtains elsewhere. Is that regarding how Attorney General's opinions shared with a Speaker of a House yes. are handled? Yes. So for example, in the Turks and Caicos, there's a matter wherein um, cabinet members were being asked to, to, to speak on a particular investigation that um, involved the former premier. And they were trying to invoke um, privilege. Mm. And the courts ruled there, and in their constitution, to be very clear, it says that the Attorney General is the legal advisor to both cabinet mm -hmm. and the House of Representatives. Yes. In Jamaica, it's just the cabinet. Yes. And the courts ruled that, listen, you can't assert individual privilege mm. because the Attorney General is not there supporting George Davis mm -hmm. if you were a cabinet member. It can only assert privilege for the collective, mm -hmm. and that's an important distinction. But the other point I want to drive home, the other constitutional role of the Attorney General is that the person, the position, is an arbiter mm -hmm. of public interest. Mm -hmm. They're there to support your business and my business. And in that regard, when there is an inherent tension between that concept of privilege to the cabinet, mm -hmm. and again, Mrs. Holness is not a member of the cabinet, yes. um, the question then becomes, is the public interest greater than this particular privilege that you would want to assert? And that is the point that I would want the Jamaican people who are watching mm -hmm. to ask themselves, given the importance of this um, report and the matter of the tension between one constitutional authority, mm -hmm. which is the House Speaker, and another constitutional authority, which is the Auditor General. Yes. Is this not something that we would want to know what the main lawyer, the yes. Attorney General, thinks on it? So, Robert, is, aren't we setting ourselves up, putting ourselves in a position where every piece of correspondence shared by, shared with the House Speaker that informs a decision that she makes on whichever issue the demand is going to come for that opinion to be shared. In other words, the whole speaker cannot work, take counsel, and then make a decision that all of the, the, the training of the decision has to be shared. Is that where we want to go? Absolutely. Mm. Why not? Why not have transparency? Why not open it up and allow all the members of parliament to be the ones that are reading this opinion? Are, are you sure about that? That, that that's what you want? Absolutely. But so okay, so someone I want to say, clarify JJ's position. I'm coming to you, I'm coming okay. to you, Mikael. But, but Robert, let, let me let me let me ask again. If the need for transparency is such that the advocates network is willing to call for that, someone would say, Okay, so are we to have public meetings of cabinet? No, we're not asking. Why? For because that is a situation where you will have going and coming. At the end of the day in cabinet, a decision will be made and it will be made public. Mm. But you don't want to be involved in the details of the discussions at cabinet level. But why That's should like, every detail that, involve, that informs no, the decision no, 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 no. of a this house speaker? Is, no, house but speaker, this is yes. a different situation. No, but this we're talking is, about transparency. So I'm asking how much of it do you want and from where? And that, that's what I'm driving at because you've said that what the whole speaker gets to inform any decision that she'll make ought to properly be shared publicly. Because All right? it was yes. an opinion that was sought from the Attorney General. Yes. Right? That's a diff you, can't, you can't take that now and say anything. You, you, you can't expand it to that extent. Everything that is dealt with needs to be looked at individually. Let's not go to the point where we're asking, you know, for total transparency to the point where every well, time somebody... Well, it wouldn't be transparency at that point. That's the point. M M Mikkel, you're, you're, yeah, you're I, I just want to reiterate, but Robert touched on it because I, I wouldn't want us to, to speak in extremities mm. because certainly you want people to be able to have unfettered access to be able to go to the Attorney General, ask for opinion, mm. and then be so guided yes. without the leading up to the decision yes. um, being shared. That's a separate issue than an output a document yes. now and remember we are pointed out that the attorney general also has an obligation to the people of jamaica and that is the inherent this, this um, difference in so this the, particular the argument. attorney general has this obligation why is there no pressure being exerted at the door of the attorney general to say sir that opinion that you shared with mrs holness re this matter kindly share it with the parliamentarians in the Houses of Parliament. There are 84 of them. Well, sus I suspect that that is something that may very well come in the end. Are you going to do that? 
We are not. We can't call for that. We are not parliamentarians. You can call for it, but well, the, yeah, the yeah, point yeah. is this: that really and truly, we think that it's not something that should be kept by one person. Yeah. it should be shared. But with Mikhail, why would JFJ not align itself to such a call to say, Mr. Auditor General, si Attorney General, since we're not getting it from the House Speaker, and before this matter goes to court, because really it doesn't need to. Mm -hmm. Could you share that with the, the, the members elected and sworn into the legislature in both houses of parliament? So, so let's be very clear. I gave a, 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 a written statement to the Jamaica Gleaner. Yes. But you can understand that sometimes you have to condense um, the responses yes. for your article. But we said in our written statement that there should be instances where the Attorney General um, exercises certain discretion where there should be an obligation mm -hmm. to share the opinion in the public's interest. So we actually made that statement okay. because we recognize the importance of it. So we're not, and, and this is the thing now, when you have um, certain positions that may be seen as political appointments, because remember the Attorney General is actually appointed by the Prime Minister. Appointed and I think, by the Governor General on the and, advice and of the, the Prime Minister. Thank you, you so much mm -hmm. for the clarification, because mm -hmm. that is important for the public as yes. well. So, you know, these are some of the conversations that we really have to be talking to within the context of constitutional reform. Robert, I, I want to move the issue along to the issue of gender representation and in your brief at that coalition of civil society organizations press conference you made the point about the lack of gender representation and how what does what that does for inequality and the perpetuation of inequality and I say to you that in our parliament in Jamaica there are 26 women 18 in the lower house in the house of representatives and eight in the upper house the senate that 26, 26 over 84, you do the simple division, that's 30.04%, I think. So 30% of Jamaica's parliamentarians are women. That is five percentage points higher than the global average of 25%. So if it is that we want to move to a society where there's more gender equality, the fact of 30% gender representation higher than the global average, is that not a step in the right direction and not therefore the subject, should be therefore the subject of criticism from the Advocates Network? No, it, hold on. It's not just a question of representation in Parliament. Yes, or but it's a in, start. Or in Senate. Yes. We're doing well. Let's yes. face it, when you look around corporate Jamaica today, there are so many women CEOs that, you know, it, it, it's probably higher than most in the world. Yes. The fact is that what we are seeing is a gradual movement in a direction where there are far more women who are taking leadership positions yes. at various levels. So we're happy with that. But let us move it also yes. in terms of ensuring that when you're talking about hiring somebody, you're not going to offer a man a salary which is twice as much is as this, a woman. Is this happening wide scale in Jamaica? It, it still happens. Still happens, but happens. not as wide scale. You not cent, as wide 30 cent more on the dollar men are paid. Uh, men are the owners of the means of production. Um, women have more difficulty in seeking business loan as entrepreneurs. Still in Jamaica women in 2024. businesses are likely to fail mm -hmm. than men. I love statistics, and I think we yes. have to be guided by the stats. All right. She says men lie, numbers lie. Well, men lie, women lie, numbers <laughs> don't. Yeah, we take a break. We come back with more. At least we will talk some constitutional reform matters. It's your boy Ray Lawrence. The Move Doc. And you're watching Cooking with Love. You can't scare me. You can't me. On CBM TV. Keep it locked in. You see me? The ladies need to see you in a nice love scene. <laughs>
I know that some people, depending on their politics, find the civil society groups annoying sometimes, but they are very necessary. And without them, Jamaica wouldn't have advanced as far along the path of development that we have. They are here to stay. They should be celebrated. You can disagree with them because nobody is a repository of all knowledge. Nobody is right all the time. But, you know, sometimes I can't understand the hate that is directed at some of those in civil society who volunteer their time to ensure that the ship of Jamaica is sailed correctly. I have uh, Robert Stevens with me from the Advocates Network and Mikhail Jackson from Jamaicans for Justice. Robert, the matter of constitutional reform and the committee that has been tasked with doing the legwork ahead of what we expect to be a vote in a referendum on what to do with His Majesty at Buckingham Palace. If you speak with members of the Reform Committee, they'll tell you that there has been a lot of work going on. I've listened to some of the consultations that they've had publicly. They point to those and other things. But if you talk to regular people, your colleagues, they say, we can't feel what the Reform Committee is doing. Uh, which side of the coin do you land on? Do you think enough has been done already up to this point, or it is lacking the effort? Totally lacking. The idea of public education has got to be in the byways, on the highways. It has got to be in the bars, in the schools, in the communities. You cannot have a little 30-person group meet in a hotel and think that that is public education. What you have got to do is begin to spread it far wider. We believe that this must be led by the youngsters in particular. Which ones? And I'm talking about the schools mm. as well as the universities mm. and the people who are not going to school or university but mm. in the youth groups. We need to get the youth involved. They are the ones who are staying away from the polls. Mm. They are the ones who are withdrawing from society in terms of believing in the political system, etc. We need to get them involved because they need to understand that this constitution is for them. It, you, you and I are not going to be around for a hell of a long time after well, well, Robert, this. I expect me. to be around for a long time. Probably. <laughs> but I know that I am now at 75 and yes. I'm looking at, you know, I'm on the doorstep. The point is this, though, that the youngsters have got to be involved. Mm. And it's our responsibility mm. to begin to bring them in mm. and make sure that they fully understand when we are talking about constitution, what are the things that need to be included yes. and what are the things that are going to guide the future of this country? Mikhail, constitutional reform is distinctly unsexy. It, it has been, it perhaps will always be. In most countries, even in the developed world, you ask someone about the constitution, go to the United States. People will say, well, uh, the First Amendment and the right to bear arms, but they can't say anything beyond that. And it's a huge document. And some countries don't have any documents, but people can tell you what the Constitution in practice says in Israel, for instance, and in the UK. Mm -hmm. This committee is facing a challenge in a society where nobody gives two hoots about the Constitution in real terms. That's what we're led to believe. Is that right? Is that attitude among Jamaicans about their con the Constitution right? And is the attitude the reason that they, the diffusion of the information about the work of the CRC is as it is? I think successive administrations and responsible state agencies and political parties have failed Jamaicans. Mm with public education on this particular issue. I can agree issue. with you on that fully. Complete failure. Mm. And you know, when we explain to individuals um, what entails in the constitution, when people ask me, um, for example, I teach, and, and the question is, Miss McCann pay me school fee? Mm -hmm. I said, maybe you should be talking about the right to quality yes. education. Not up just to education. The tertiary. Mm -hmm. Quality education mm -hmm. up to the tertiary level. Because we have to be thinking about adult education, you know, the, the Jamal program yes. that existed. How do we ensure that some of these things are constitutionally provided for? Right to health. Understanding, again, this type of conversation is breaking it down to the people. Because I don't think people lack an interest. You lack an understanding. Mm -hmm. And therefore, lack of understanding means that you will not be as engaged but it is our duty to engage people and I think that is the challenge I have with the process mm -hmm. because I know we have hard-working people on that committee dear I say Sujay Boswell close colleague yes. of mine and he's on the committee he's working hard they're going to the meetings the permanent secretary led by um, le leading some of the process yes. they're there they're working the question is always that translating to the public mm -hmm. and is it being effectively done and I would say the answer is no there needs to be greater levels of improvement. Just to add that it's 
watching the standing finance committee. Mm -hmm. If you were to ask so many Jamaicans what that means, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to answer. Right. But it's an important committee following the budget debate, and it is at that committee... Well, it precedes the budget debate. It comes before the standing finance means before the budget, before the estimates of expenditure are debated. Yeah. And, and, and they were detailing, the, they meant March 5th. That's exactly and, and what they do, yes. Yes, they were mm -hmm. detailing mm -hmm. some of the things. And the question is, it wasn't until member Julian Robinson asked the question mm -hmm. that we heard, um, oh, the bill will be tabled um, sometime before the sectoral debates mm -hmm. in about April or May, they're yes. about. And I didn't, I didn't realize yes. because there was no public statement from the minister yes. to indicate as such. That was when we heard that this is the detailed amount mm -hmm. for the public education. Mm -hmm. And that is when we're hearing that, guess what? That dead six month period um, in parliament that the bill can't be debated. Mm -hmm. That is when you're planning to have public education mm -hmm. to, to replace the monarchy, yes. which is so offensive to be having as an independent country. Yes. So we want it to be replaced. The question is, how are we going to get a referendum passed when people are not aware about the type of president yes. that you want? Robert, do you get the sense that the Minister of Legal and Constitutional Affairs and her team are taking a collective deep breath before going again hard where the public education and other attendant things are concerned lead to coincide with her presentation in the sectoral debate? I'll be honest with you. You know, I think they're putting a hundred and odd million dollars yeah, for public education. Mm -hmm. The fact is that's a, that's a drop in the bucket, you know, when you look at what should be involved. Particularly, as I say, if you are going to go into the schools, if you're going to go into universities, if you're going to create a situation where you have public debate. Now, we believe that an organization like a JADE, the Jamaica Association of Debating, Debating. should be involved mm. and should be part of the process of encouraging debates mm. at the university as well as at the workplace level. Yes. Right? all over the island we should be talking about because this this new constitution yes. is going to shape the future yes. of this country and it is important for us to get it right yes okay. hear you on that all right well from where i sit i certainly believe that the reform committee can do much better there is as, as michael jackson has said successive administrations have failed the public we're informing the public about what is in that constitution and what it means is concerned so that's why the reform committee's work is so hard because they almost have to start from scratch you can square one 50 million times you're still going to get one they're still in the squaring one phase somebody needs to nudge them beyond that point and let them be aware that there's further there are further steps on the continuum to take to get us to the point of understanding what we will ultimately vote for in a referendum um yeah